Well, thank you. Uh, I want to thank everyone at the uh, LBJ Library for inviting me here to speak. And uh, nearly nine years ago, uh, here in Austin, I interviewed for the White House job, and actually just not too far away from here at the, the Bush campaign headquarters. And during that interview, I'll never forget what Chief of Staff Andy Carr told me. He said that working at the White House was like trying to drink water through a fire hose at full throttle. <laughs> and he was right. So let me throw some events at you. 9-11, the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, the Columbia Space Shuttle disaster, funerals for two presidents and a pope, another close presidential election, the largest natural disaster in U.S. history, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. I traveled to nearly 70 countries with President Bush, 49 states. Sorry, Vermont. <laughs> During my eight years, I made nearly one million images in the White House. And for all you techie, techies out there, the storage for the entire digital photo database came in around 50 terabytes. As a photojournalist, I relished the surprise moments of capturing those, those moments that you just can't plan for. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky. <laughs> this is at the ranch in Crawford, Texas. And I did have moments where I could prepare for, for example, day one of the administration. This is President Bush entering the Oval Office for the very first time as the 43rd president. And this was also my very first time in the Oval Office. And I may be the first person to into the Oval Office walking backwards, because that's what I had to do in order to get this picture. The first signature as president. <laughs> this is the first couple at the end of the night on inauguration evening uh, 2001. And uh, just so there's some context to this picture, this is at the end of the night uh, and the President and Mrs. Bush attended nearly 22 inaugural balls. The first landing of Marine One on the South Lawn. But nothing could compare, prepare me for September 11th, 2001. I was with the President at the elementary school in Sarasota, Florida. And Approximately 9.14 a.m. when this photo was taken, uh, and this is minutes after Andy Card whispered in the president's ear, uh, a second plane hit the tower, America is under attack. And the president walked into the hold room and immediately walked to the corner of the room, grabbed uh, a notepad and started writing. And I was waiting for him to look up to see what was going on on the television, but he never did. And it wasn't until uh, 9.17 that the president was notified by communications director Dan Bartlett, who alerted everyone to the television screen. And the president sees, for the very first time, the images of Flight 175 hitting the South Tower. At this stage, everything was focused on the horrific events playing out in New York City. No one knew the scope of what was to come. Aboard Air Force One, 10 a.m., approximately 10 a.m., the Vice President has been evacuated from the West Wing to a secure location. Flight 77 has crashed into the Pentagon. Flight 93 has been hijacked. The entire U.S. airspace has been shut down. The discussion aboard the plane turned to the president's safety. The president really wanted to get back to Washington at this time, but he was advised against it. And 
my experience on the plane, uh, I remember this one moment uh, when there were lots of false reports flying around the plane like a, a, a car bomb at the State Department, a fast moving object headed toward the President's ranch in Crawford. And at one moment, the President came out of the cabin and said, I just, I just heard that Angel is the next target. And Angel is the code name for Air Force One. Approximately 9.20 a.m., Flight 93 has crashed. Approximately 10.30. Actually, there's a slide missing there, unfortunately. Um, our first stop was Barksdale Air Force Base. And uh, Air Force One was quickly surrounded by armed personnel. And the staff and the press, we were all ushered into buses while the president boarded an arm, armored Humvee. This is also where the president received his first full briefing on the status of the attacks via teleconference. We were there at Barksdale Air Force Base for about two hours, and the president did another uh, address or a, a taped statement that was later sent out to the media. Later that afternoon, our second stop was off at Air Force Base in Nebraska, where the president received a top secret briefing from his military commanders in, inside this room. Back aboard the plane, after we left Nebraska, we learned that we were finally headed back home to Washington. And this image shows the Air Force One crew uh, trying to get some information about what was happening back at home. And uh, this is the time when, uh, before Air Force One was equipped with, with satellite TV, and in order for the airplane to receive reception, we had to fly over a major metropolitan city. So it made the day even more surreal as the news would, would fade in and fade out, and uh, we'd get just little bits and pieces of what was happening. The president on the phone with the vice president. The president comforting Harriet Myers, who was the staff secretary at the time. And on our approach to Andrews Air Force Base, the president and the staff noticed the F-16 fighter jets escorting us back to Washington. This scene made me feel like we were truly at war. Back at the White House, inside the PIOC, the Presidential Emergency Operations Center, discussing the situation with Vice President Cheney. The next morning, September 12th, National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice watches the sunrise as the President speaks to Prime Minister Tony Blair on the phone about the situation. Also the same day, the President visited the Pentagon to thank fire and rescue crews. September 14th, the day of national prayer. This was the moment right after the President addressed uh, and he delivered his remarks at the National Cathedral and his father reached out to grab his hand. Also on September 14th, the president traveled to New York City to visit Ground Zero. This is a, image was made aboard Marine One as we flew over the Pentagon on the way to Andrews Air Force Base for the trip. And the president is looking out at the damage of the Pentagon. And also, you may notice, this is the first day that the president started wearing the flag pin. Ground Zero in New York City. For weeks after I made this photo, I, I never realized that they're actually standing on a fire truck that was crushed. The president spent nearly three hours meeting with the families of the World Trade Center victims. This was probably the toughest situation I've ever had to photograph in in all my eight years at the White House. There is intense sorrow and sadness. 
Um, the families carried photos of, of their, the, the missing. Um, they also carried signs of their names, uh, of their loved ones. Signs that said, uh, have you seen my mother? Have you seen my brother? Have you seen my aunt? It was, it was very, very hard to lift the camera. And I, I probably only made just two or three images uh, during this scene. It was, it was very, very uh, emotional. <coughs> September 20th, the first face-to-face -face meeting with Prime Minister Tony Blair. This is also the evening that the president addressed the nation uh, during a joint session of Congress about the 9-11 attacks. First week in October, the CIA briefing led by CIA Director George Tenet on the right, and this is at Camp David. October 7th, the President collects his thoughts before addressing the nation about the start of the, the war in Afghanistan. The President holds the badge of fallen port authority officer George Howard, given to him by his mother during his trip to Ground Zero. The President carried this badge everywhere in the days and the weeks that followed 9-11. And I felt it was extremely important to, to show this badge and to show it in his hand. So one day I, I asked the President if I can photograph the badge and he said, he said simply yes. And um, he pulled it out of his pocket and I made my picture. Thank you. <laughs>